In other words, people often fled for a number of reasons. The encroaching war, the prospect of Jewish rule and victory, um, the fear of atrocities, economic privations, chaos, lack of leadership, and so on. But the atrocities is an important factor in all of this, partly a, a result of Arab broadcasting and exaggeration of the atrocities which did occur, especially the Yassin. The Arabs in, in radio stations and propagandists inflated the atrocities, um, and this, of course, caused panic and fear among the remaining population. Um, maybe I'll say one more word about this before I um, reach a conclusion. Altogether, I've worked out, there's no way of working it out accurately, but it's more or less right. Altogether, something like 800 Arab non-combatants, that is civilians or prisoners of war, died in the court, or were murdered, if you like, in the, by Jews in the course of the 48 war. 800. Thousands more died in the course of battle. Soldiers, some civilians, but 800 were massacred either as prisoners or civilians, in a series of something like 20 atrocities. Small massacres, big massacres. Something like 250 Jews were massacred by Arabs, Jews being prisoners of war or civilians, in the course of the 48 war. There were massacres on both sides. The Jews massacred more Arabs mainly because they could, mainly because the Jews conquered 400 Arab settlements in the course of the war, 400 Arab villages and towns fell under Jewish control and conquest in the course of the war, whereas only about a dozen Jewish settlements in the whole course of the war fell under Arab control, were conquered by Arabs. So the Jews ended up taking over large numbers of Arab communities and therefore massacres were possible. Uh, Arabs conquered very few Jewish communities and therefore it was less likely or possible for them to massacre people. The massacres have to be put into two contexts, in my view. One is an historical context of what the Jews perceived as a war of annihilation by the Arabs. The Arabs had launched the hostilities, Palestinian Arabs, in November, December 47. The Arab states attacked Israel in 1948 with their armies, Egypt, eh, eh, Syria, Lebanon. Not Lebanon, not so much, but eh, eh, Syria, Iraq, eh, Egypt, and Jordan, in one way or another, attacked the Jewish state. The Jews felt they were about to be annihilated. That's the context in which they responded with no holds barred, and it has to be understood. And this is three years, of course, after the Holocaust ended. So that's also at the back of the Jews' minds when they think of what will happen if the Arabs win. Um, you also have to think in terms of the Jewish casualties. There were 6,000 Jewish dead during the 48 war. 6,000 dead. Uh, four and a half thousand of them were soldiers, 1,500 were civilians, uh, in a war which the Arabs had launched, had forced upon the Yishuv, one in every hundred Jews was, um, one percent of the country, were, of the population, was killed uh, in the war. It's an enormous amount. Uh, if the, Ara the Americans in Vietnam lost 59,000 troops in Vietnam in 10 years of warfare, and the American population was about 200 million at the time, had the Americans lost the same percentage of their population in the Vietnam War, we would have been talking about 2 million dead, but over a 15-year period. Here we're talking about 1% 1, 1 killed in a one-year period. So these were enormous losses. People suffered the loss of friends, relatives, everybody did. Um, dead and wounded, wounded of course being at least twice the number of those killed. Uh, and this is also part of the reason for vengefulness among Jewish troops, which led to atrocities. The second uh, um, context in which one must view the atrocities is a comparative context. What happens in civil wars in other countries? Half of the war was a civil war, Jews versus Palestinian Arabs inside Palestine up to May 48. Then it's a conventional war also involving civilian populations, but a conventional war between Israel and the Arab states from May uh, onwards. Um, what happens in wars, and especially in civil wars, in other contexts? And we've had the wars in Bosnia most recently, um, 1990s, and uh, Croatia, and so on. Uh, in uh, Bosnia, in one day, Serb troops massacred, I think it was 8,000 people in Srebrenica, one or two days. Uh, 8,000 uh, Bosnians. So you have to compare that number in one or two days to what happened in Palestine in a year-long war forced on the Jews, not the Jews being the aggressors, as the Serbs were, of course, in Bosnia. Um, 
Um, so that context has to be kept in mind. This is what happens in civil wars. This is what happens in wars in general. The numbers are very small, in fact, of those killed in atrocities. No one has to also put them on the table if you want to be truthful about what happened in history. A last point which I'll make uh, is to do with the perpetuation of the problem. From June onwards, June 48 onwards, by which time about half of the 700,000 had been displaced from their homes. After June, another 350,000 would be displaced. From June on, the Israeli government decided not to allow a refugee return. In a number of cabinet decisions, June, July, September, uh, successive decisions, which said, and orders went out to the army and the front lines, which constantly moved, do not allow refugees to return to their homes. This is a policy decision by the Israeli government. No policy decision to expel the Arabs, but a direct and consistent policy not to allow a refugee return. And very few, in fact, were allowed to return uh, by the end of 1949. Few tens of thousands returned illegally or by special agreements, but very few were allowed to return. And this is one reason why there is, until this day, a refugee, Palestinian refugee problem. Israeli governments since 1948 have adhered to this policy, not to allow a refugee return, believing that a mass return of refugees would undermine the country both demographically and in terms of security. Uh, there would be an instant Arab majority and no Jewish state. It's quite simple. This applies today. It applied as well in 1948. The other reason why there is still an Arab refugee problem is that the Arab states did not absorb their brothers and turn them into citizens of their own countries, the host countries of the refugees, or discriminated against them and kept them apart and in refugee camps. Um, had the Arab states, like I say, say Germany after World War II, absorbed uh, uh, the, refu the German refugees as happened uh, uh, after World War II, uh, there, would be, uh, there would have been no Arab refugee problem. There is no um, Sudeten German refugee problem. There's no Volkdeutsche problem uh, of G Germans who fled uh, Russia or Romania in World War II. They were absorbed in uh, Germany and became normal German citizens as did the, their descendants. The Arab states, one and all, left the refugee problem intact by leaving many of the refugees in camps and in some cases by not giving them citizenship. This applies to Lebanon and Syria especially. They were, the refugees who reached these two countries did not get citizenship. Uh, in Lebanon, they're not even allowed to work by law, uh, the 400,000 refugees there. Um, and this, of course, perpetuated the problem also. So you have the Israelis deciding not to allow them to return for good strategic and political reasons, demographic reasons, uh, and the Arab states not absorbing them uh, for good and bad reasons. Uh, the Arab states reasoned that if they absorbed the refugees, uh, the weight, the burden of the return would be dropped from Israel's shoulders. Israel, so long as the refugees existed in misery and as refugees, Israel would be on the defensive, either absorbing the refugees in the end uh, under international pressure and then weakening them itself demographically, or would resist a return of refugees and would be pilloried as immoral in uh, international eyes. So keeping the refugee problem alive was, of course, very good for the Arabs in their battle, their struggle against Israel. Uh, they also didn't want to particularly absorb them. They were poor countries, Syria, Egypt, uh, uh, Lebanon, they're relatively poor countries. They couldn't afford to absorb them. Uh, and they didn't particularly like Palestinians or want a, a perhaps mischievous Palestinian population to become part of their population. Um, so they had reasons not to um, uh, absorb them, but it's worth rem remembering that this problem has persisted uh, both as a result of Israeli decision and as a result of Arab decisions.